Dire team back. <laughs> Phoenix's turn to pick. Good evening and welcome to our second best of three series of the Epicenter C Winners Bracket Semifinals. My name is Hades and this is the match between of TNC versus MVP Phoenix. And on alone, I'm joined by Scanzer. Are you there? Yep, I am here and I am pumped and excited. These are, without a doubt, my two favorite teams in the entire world. And ha! Don't accuse me of bias because I am biased in favor of both of these teams. If anything, I might just... <laughs> like say cool things about both of them all game long and there was a wonderful chat i don't know if you saw in the lobby before with the as the players started joining the lobby mvp were like hey tnc and they said something remaining. like hey idols and this is tnc for the longest time since i've watched them when it, whenever like a sort of remaining. more established team they play against them or they beat them they always refer to them as their idols and actually Feby replied time. you're our idols and there were some heartwarming moments where Feby said, you know, we couldn't have got as far as we did without you guys. I, I don't know if it's that well known that right before the Shanghai Major, TNC actually won 3-2 in a very close best of five series against MVP. The teams actually scrimmed against each other as well a bit before that and after that, I believe. And it, it was very evident MVP were open about the fact at the Shanghai Major w with their success that they borrowed some drafting techniques Phoenix from TNC. And these are, in, in some ways, these are teams who have learned from each other and gained from each other. And MVP have found that success on LAN at an international stage, but TNC are, are clearly a team that they respect and we, we're getting right into the draft, so maybe we should get to that, but I, I'm, I'm just so pumped and excited to see these teams play against each other. I agree, I agree. I mean, I've watched, I've followed, I've cast a ton of Filipino games as well, and TNC, they are a very strong team, very versatile as well. I mean, you mentioned, we've talked about it a couple of times over the past few days. T, he's a very strong player, he Ten rarely seconds. loses his lane. So I want to see how he stands up against MVP, because like you said in the lobby, they have a lot of mutual Ten respect for each other. Remaining. So before we get dragged too much, let's get straight into the draft. You see the first pick Sven and the Lion. MVP Ten Phoenix seconds. coming up with a comfortable ventral spread with the Invoker, something in which I think Kyo or MVP plays it. They play, they like to play a cross wax Invoker or cross wax, so they always make it work. And look at that, MVP Phoenix pick Invoker and they ban Phantom Lancer because the picking Phantom Lancer into Invoker thing is something that TNC actually started and most of the world knows about it because MVP have been doing it recently very successfully. They actually did it in one of the games of the finals of Dota Pit, they did it at the Shanghai Major a few times and MVP showing like, we respect that this is a thing, this is not our thing, this is your thing and we're going to take the Invoker but we're not going to let you have the peel. remaining. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, yeah, it's... I mean, it starts out a bit like a pub strat, but going back to me, I mean, just a tiny quote which Fly said back at Dota Pit, just before it ended, saying that, I mean, you know, going for this high MMR, I mean, you shouldn't be too obsessed with it, but it's always a great goal because these pub strats always lead you to find counters against these strategies, which you never really think of. And there we go, I mean, MVP, they're taking out the OD, so options are running up for TNC. Maybe we may see something like the Jarocop to mid, which TNC have been known to play mid. I think, uh... Yeah, I think I, I, I'm not too sure. It's difficult for me to predict. I want to say that Dubu and AU are the two strongest drafters of the region by quite some distance, actually. And they understand each other. They've played each other the best of five recently. They've played a lot of scrims against each other. And it, it kind of does warp the dynamic somewhat when two teams understand each other that closely and have respected each other and followed each other. And TNC bring out that bounty hunter definitely suggests a different uh, angle for them because. It, it, what it means to start with is that Lion is probably going to be solo support in a safe player. It's something that MVP might be able to abuse, and I think that's the response from MVP. They picked the Tusk, which is a hero that very possibly could end up abusing the, the TNC safe lane. With, I mean, Bouncy Hunter can actually come back to the safe lane. We have seen some teams do that in the oh. past, but Phoenix usually it's roaming up the middle of the off lane. And yeah, I, I, I hear you reacting to TNC picking up the Jakiro, which is a Tiki special right now. Dyer this is like their back. favorite pushing hero in the game. They picked the mid Jakiro. I mean, Tiki plays. Pretty much, these are the things he plays. He plays carries in the mid lane, like Sven, Phantom Lancer, Juggernaut, those kinds of interesting roles, and he plays Jakiro. That's the, those are like his his two things at the moment. Yeah, but this is what I like about TNC. I mean, this is why I like how 
you can never really predict. I would say they're just a slightly more controlled version, stronger than first departure when it comes to drafting. And I mean, yeah, they like to pull the occasional surprises here and there, but there's always this logic behind it, which you can sort of see. And let's just hope MVP can actually play against this. So, I mean, for now, do you think it's going to be like a T, he, you know, Sven or Jakura mid? I mean, I've played no, no, with Jakura mid more. T is Jakura. T is Jakura. They, I, I don't think they've ever picked a Jakura that was for anyone except for T. I actually think that every TNC um, draft that has a Jakura in it, it's T. So I I think it's extremely it's unlikely it's anything else. I also think that the Jakura with the Bounty Hunter should do really well against the Invoker. But the concern Five for me, if you're me. TNC, is that MVP have, have noticed Bounty Hunter is a hero that usually roams away from the safe lane. If their safe lane is Sven and Lion against Darkseer and Tusk, they're going to get destroyed. The Sven's going to have a very hard time farming early on in the game. That's true. And I mean, Jakura mid, I believe this is a strategy which... It may have taken from the NA scene because I believe NA, uh, especially back in Shanghai Mage, Jakiro mid was something which only teams like Complexity, teams in Archon, they're the only teams who would run the Jakiro mid. So hopefully this will work out. Maybe TNC can sort of improve on their strategy a bit more. And I like the bounty on a pick just because you can screw around the lanes. And I guess that's why MVP, you know, they go with Tuskar. Always great for the shards. Pretty much like an herb shaker in a way, where he's great for just catching you, forcing you into a very bad position and stuff. So for the final no, no, picks no, in they, TNC, I mean the, the task pick has to do with the bounty answer pick. But this is what I'm saying. It's not about dealing with it directly. I, I really feel like that it's a response in the sense of because you have bounty answer, we cannot pressure your safe lane. That's the plan. Oh. <laughs> very very interesting for TNC to finish with a an off lane broodmother for Sam H. Which is super interesting considering the fact that there's already a Darks and MVP Phoenix which could just mash up against it. But this is what I'm saying. There's there's a mind game involved here. I feel like TNC spot the fact that MVP want to run Darks and Tusk against the Sven and Lion, and that's going to be a losing lane for TNC. They pick the Brood. If you put the Darks against the Brood now, well, then you don't have that pressure on the, the Sven and Lion anymore. And remember that the Bounty Hunter can still help out the Brood with the with the help of the Bounty Hunter. The Brood could even beat the Darks in one v one. So. Now it's 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 like the ball's back in MVP's court. They need to not figure out how do they react to this, and I I'm not too sure. I actually like this pick. I mean, I agree with you on how the good mother. And this is where you know this is where the mind games comes in. So MVP Phoenix, maybe they want to consider other heroes, but. The thing about the Brit mother, she's always going to be there. There's always the threat of you know that lane pushing in, forces you to split up. And MVP really likes the early pressure. But Ember Spirit, so with the Venge, I guess that's okay. They should be able to kill the Ember if they can zone out Brit mother enough. I mean, so this so this is the point. So this is exactly what. So I think MVP wanted to find a way that they could deal with the Brit pick without switching their Darkseid to the safe lane because. The way the draft developed to start with, it was fundamental to their draft they wanted to run the Darkseid and Tusk to shut down the Sven. And so they, they pick up the Ember Spirit, and I think you're exactly right that with Ember and Vengeful Spirits, they probably can deal with the Brood perfectly fine. The Bounty Hunter might get in the mix and cause some issues, but I actually think that if if MVP play it right, the, the Vengeful Spirit and Ember Spirit can just beat the Bounty and the Brood together. And again, we go back to that concern, which for me is, is the, the big talking point early on in this game will be, do TNC get that farm on Raven? Well, we'll just have to see. Now we've just entered the game, introducing the teams on the Radiant side for MVP. Kiwo playing on the Invoker mid, 4F going to the off lane on their Dark Seer. We'll have Lord Dubu on the Vengeful Spirit, Febby playing on the Tuscar, and we're gonna have MP on the Ember Spirit in the safe lane. Yeah, on the, the side of TNC, it's, it's Raven on his carry Sven, it's Amage on his off lane Brood, Tihi will be playing as Midjakiro, and Winter G Small Sun, who <laughs> As a joke, calls himself Pilot Die, playing Lion, which is the Pilot Die hero, and AU on the roaming bounty hunter. So, I mean, the the roaming will be a big story here too. The roaming bounty hunter on one side, the roaming task on the other side. And you do see that baby has got dust and sentries, and uh, yeah, I feel like he'll spend most of his time with the docks here. But he might also be moving around the map just to try and directly counteract the movements of the bounty hunter. Those are. Those are both things he can do, and remember the docks here can actually push on the spin and the lion on his own anyway, even even if the the task isn't with him. <coughs> I'm just worried right now because MVP, they, you know, they're pooling a lot of resources and a lot of detection just to lock down this bird mother and the bounty hunter. So you see, if these ganks don't really work out, this is where the economy is not going to look very, you know, very good for them. And I worry because I feel that TNC have the slight edge in terms of coming online when it comes to the draft. I I don't know. I mean, like exactly the thing I keep going on about is is Sven going to find a way to get farm, laning against the Darkseer and possibly a Tusk as well. I, I don't know, I mean, Jakira, yes, you're right, Jakira has an easy time, and Broodmother could have an easy time if it's not dying, but Sven, I think, probably has a very difficult time in this game, 
and so it's, it's, it's not obvious to me that TNT have an easier time coming online, but obviously if, if either team's rotations and roaming is extremely successful, that would be dictating of, of the pace of the early game, regardless of the lane setup. Alright, so there we go. Bounty Hunter just casually placing a ward down the sentry over there. He's not going to scout anybody, so it's a bit of a wasted ward already for now. But I like what Ayo is doing. He looks like he's trying to snap the curry, waiting for a style maybe, but not a curry. He's at the top lane, so we're not going to see that just yet. And this Darks here looks like he, yep, there, he will be still going up against this Grove Knight. Raven, you can see already he's taking a lot of harassment from the Ion Shell. Bottom lane, Sam still trying to find his way to that level 2, that very critical level 2. Because once he hits level 3 to 4, that's where he hits critical mass, and they have to lock him down by then. Still in an attempt at Teehee, but not really there. No, I, I don't know if it's a kill attempt as much as just a little bit of harassment. Like, they know that Teehee is quite comfortable in this matchup, Jakiro and Invoker, so the Tusk starts there, just give Kira a little bit of help at the beginning of the game, as you can see. He's He's still getting a bit behind. I mean, it's it's a it's a I think it's a slightly favorable lane for the Jakira at the beginning, and AU's bounty hunter is going to come across as well because, well, I thought no, he's just picked up I think it's late all the venom and he's going to sneak back back around to the top lane. And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier on. Bounty hunter usually wanting to roam some mid and off lane, but they recognize that they actually need a little bit of extra help against the Darkseid, otherwise Sven won't be able to keep up his farm or certainly won't be able to shut down the Darkseid. They're going to try and kill the Darkseid right now. And I don't know if they're able to catch him. Um, it's a close in... one, yeah, you know. It's because the minute you know, Sven goes closer, he F F F F will probably have an inkling that AO is in the neighborhood because he hasn't shown himself. Oh, mid lane. Map. That's pure nearly dive, but he's going to and... Oh, that's really close. 40 HP and he will just self up. And we were talking about the, the fairy fires earlier when we were watching mid one, he's really good at them, but Kuro had a, a really close fairy fire call there. He chased him and he ended up ducking down into these trees where he was in fog, getting the fairy fire off and almost turned things around on Teehee. I, I, again, I think that this is a lane that favors Teehee somewhat, but there's potential for Kuro to upplay him. You know, bottom lane, the spider army is starting to grow, so this is where things look a bit scarier for MP. But actually, maybe not. Looks like they're just gonna kill the spiders ASAP. But I think Sam H is used to playing in these matchups. And the courier does get snapped by AO. Talk about that, and there we go. Things will look yeah. a bit scary for Kyo. Luckily, he did get the salve, so he will be able to stay in lane just a bit longer. Yeah, and he got his boots. So it, the, the courier got to him beforehand. It was sniped on the way back rather than on the way there. It would be much, much worse if it was on the way there. But gonna try and. Th I mean, AO's. Con I don't know if he's considering diving, was he just sneaking across while. Do you see Docs here TP in here? I think. I feel like they. Oh, is he just going to farm you? He wanted to get the stack on time, but he's, he's going to block the stack. <coughs> nice deep done. So that's a bit of his comeback farm really affected right there. Because the lane looks a bit more dangerous as Winter, he's just controlling the top lane very, very nicely. Yeah, All I, lane, think, still I think with the Bounty Hunter showing itself at all at the top lane, suddenly it becomes really scary for the Dark Sin. I'm still curious about the fact that MVP didn't try to run the dual lane, which I think would have done very well the docks in the Tusk, but I guess it comes down to the fact that they feel like the Tusk needs to help the mid lane a lot in this game, because it's just that, that TG Kira is putting a lot of pressure on Kira. He's, I mean, it's, it's looking even right now, but that's partially because of the, the supports being nearby. True, and I mean, I guess maybe you just don't want to take that risk, because Teehee, you can see he almost killed Kira, so that's probably you know, giving them a warning. Now Ayo, he's going to leech, or try to leech his level 2 away from 4F. We just decided to stick to jungle. Fabio you probably hit the top lane for a bit of EXP. Still well, haven't seen any kills say, now. Oh, yeah, dang. sorry, you you were gonna say before I inter interrupted you that MP is still doing really well at the safe lane for MVP and Broodmother getting levels, but hasn't actually gotten that much farm, so they're doing a good job to... I, I guess Sam knows that they can kill him, and so he's settling for getting a little bit less than what he'd like to get, just to make sure that he doesn't die. It's actually quite incredible there's no kills in this game yet, and again, I want to say that it speaks to the, the level of play and understanding of these teams of each other, because these are both teams that, especially with the lineups they have, would like to make early kills, absolutely, and so far there's been some close calls, but nothing quite yet, you know, getting the whole oh, way they're going they're kill. Dive. We have an ice path, there is no detection and alacrity, and very, very quick fingers there from QO. And this is, by the way, this is... Again, a, a deliberate decision, because Kuro is playing a Quas Exhort Invoker, but he has that early point in Wex, because, of, I mean, obviously the alacrity is important for dealing with the Jakira, but it's also the Ghost Walk. I feel like both of those skills are needed for this lane. He needs the Ghost Walk to survive the ganks, and he needs the alacrity to actually be able to farm against the Jakira. I think without it, he'd, he'd probably be struggling. 
it's really hard for this lane to be pushed into the tower because going up against the Jakiro, he's maxed out dual breath and liquid fire. Not pushing this lane out anytime soon. So that's the plan, they're okay with that. As long as he gets his last hits, he should be content with this lane. He's having a quick pause. It's it's hard to use Jakiro works though. They like they kinda of sit around, he sits on the lane and if you leave the lane he's gonna kill your tower almost immediately. If you stay in the lane, he's going to give you a hard time and force you to like deal with them all the time. And later on, once TNC group up, you'll see that the push is actually just ridiculous. Like, Jakiro has a very unique effect on, on pushing power in that uh, it's the only hero in the game that you're going to, with one creep wave, you're going to kill a whole tower because you have a Jakiro. And your teammates go there and then the tower just like does nothing to protect itself. Heroes have to always come and protect towers. and. This hero really punishes teams who, who think, oh, they'll slowly chip at our tower, don't worry, we'll go there later, because that usually you don't get the chance to do that. And I think Ayo, he's scouted at the courier, he's gonna be going for it. He wants to snipe his courier. Oh, he's gonna get it. Been gone on in the mid lane. One more right click. You get the courier. And meanwhile, Tihi, like that they're going on him, and the Sergio just slowing him down. Ayo. Here, Boba Venom slow, value slow. Not really, he's gonna go for the bounty rulers there, and the courier's gonna get sniped as well. You didn't really see what was on him, but it's out Tihi. Okay, so be first blood right here, and QO will get himself a nice kill on Tiki, the last hit there. That's it was a, to find it soon. There was a bracer on the career. <laughs> the bracer, oh. that's not really much. It's it's more a, a shame that it dies because it doesn't need to. It's just that they were focused, A and T were both focused on trying to get Tiki out alive and didn't micro the career properly and well, that's three careers so far dead in this game. There's only one hero kill in six and a half minutes, but three three careers have been killed. <laughs> really, really huge amount here. Alright, so careers and deaths. This game, I mean, it seems a bit more passive. I think both teams, like you said, they really understand each other very well. And if memory serves me right, I think these two teams have scrimmed quite often in the past before as well. So it's understandable. Yeah. Because they've, I think they've scrimmed a lot. Yeah, sorry, they've scrimmed a lot and they've played a best of five against each other recently and, and they've been very open about how they, they borrow things from each other's strategies and this is the, the interesting for me because most people would assume that these are teams that both are going to be aggressive and they kind of do, they like to fight, but it's, it's, it's actually more complicated than that. It's, you know, liking to fight is not going to say you're going to force fighting if the enemy team knows how to react and knows how to, you know, respond to your movements. Like, if they find an opportunity or an opening, either of these teams could suddenly become very aggressive, but they're not going to force those openings, they're not, you know, they, they, they understand when the aggression is appropriate. That's true. And, I mean, I was just about to say as well, I mean, back in the lobby, I mean, you pretty much set it off. But I think right now, TNT, they don't want to sit back for long. Because if they play this farm game, it's going to be quite scary. I think Ember Spirit into the Dark Seal combo is the last thing you want to be playing against. Because the Jakiro sooner or later will fall, like, he will fall off in terms of scaling late game. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The, the plan for TNC is to get an earlier timing, right? So Jakiro is going to have a timing which pushes, and Sven is supposed to get much more far, much more quickly than Ember Spirit. So the, the idea here for TNC, I think, is that around about 20 25 minutes, Sven's going to be really big. They're going to group and push, and if you fight us, we've got this really strong Sven. If you don't, we're going to kill all your tiles with Jakiro. Plus, the, the, the trap threats, if, if you, you're indecisive. Whereas, I agree, for MVP. They represent a good late game, they represent a good team fight, but I, I think their timing is, is a little bit later maybe than TNC's. Meanwhile, we have a smoke from Fabian and Dubu. Looks like they were going to head to the top lane. <coughs> Try to look for either Winter, G, or maybe Raven. So the Dark Serum in the Snowball and the Iron Shell, that actually really, really hurts. There we go, it's already being set up. Fref, will they go here on Raven? There we go, the Snowball coming in. The Surge is got to follow. You have the stun and the wall. Sun Strike not going to be there. Actually, wait, he's still going to get the last hit. So Invoker getting himself a nice bit of gold and his Midas should be... Oh, it's already completed anyways. Just got it. Well, in the middle lane, they are going for him. Yeah. yeah, same hit. They're going straight for him and... Oh, he but no joke. He was going to get the last hit. And he's searing change, but not going to land. He's going to land on a couple of spiders and that's it. And Sam Hitch runs for the hills for the neutral creeps with his babies. And this is what Zai used to do with Broodmother, by the way. Build a, a web, like a chain of webs from the bot lane to the mid lane. And so as soon as they realize there's a commitment from MVP to kill the top lane, he can quickly come across as the Brood and they can actually make that return kill in the mid lane. So I think it's it's very good thinking by TNC. Like, we're gonna get a trade in another part of the map. And he still gets his Midas in good time as well. I mean, it's nine minutes and a half in with a Midas and a Broodmother who did not really farm. I would say Basically. it's still a huge win. Yeah, he's had it for a while actually, he had it even before that kill, so Yikes. I think it's, it's perfectly fine. 
4F, just cutting the creep wave. AO is just happy to get EXP, but this tower should be falling because I don't think TSE can really contest for now. There's two stack in Ancients, and this scouted out completely by MVP. I just want to see it. I, I think that TNC probably wants to kill a tower sometime soon. And are oh, they going to be like, oh, they're going on the here, and he's the one being gone on. Yeah, the macro pipe. That's a lot of commitments on the macro pipe. All his remnants as well, I believe. Sunstrike. Oh, the vacuum back. Not gonna connect. And Ember Spirit of Damage will get the kill. He has one more remnant. Oh, I think he messed up there. Probably wanted to remnant first before using the chains, but. They're okay with that win. AO over here. He got it out. The dust has been used. Do they have one more dust? Yes, Dubu has it. And AO is most certainly dead here. So, top lane. BP starting to find a bit of momentum. 4 to 1. It is interesting that uh, MP is actually playing the Ember Spirit this game and Kyo is playing the Invoker. I mean, they, this is a versatile team and they do both historically play both heroes. But more recently, you'd expect to see Kyo playing the Ember and MP playing Invoker. MP played Invoker almost every time they picked it, the Shanghai Major. And Kyo has been playing the sort of safe lane hard carry. So, for whatever reason, MVP decided to switch it around in this game. Um, and I don't know, maybe that speaks slightly to that there was like a slight mechanical failing there by MP. It was a very minor thing. I think it's okay, but this is something which I mean, MVP they are used to doing. This is what they will do occasionally swap here and there. And QO and Febby they will go for the smoke. Alone. So who's leading the charge this time? Febby once again in the front lines, and MP with his BOTs, he's come to the top. This is where they will start to fight, now that they've got the core items. They find Raven, Snowball maybe, yep, they will go. Doesn't really bring the invoke along with him, and the shard is still off the mark. Afraid of him is deep, this is a bad idea, but they will find AO, and they have the dust, so AO is just dead. MP happy with this, so maybe they'll try to put a bit of pressure on the top T2 as Sam H pushes into the bottom T1 and making his way yeah. closer and closer to an Orchid. Yeah, and you gotta remember, this is something about the Brood again, like, sure, Darkseer can land against Brood, but the way that MVP are playing, they want their Darkseer with them whenever they're fighting, and so the Brood still gets space and still gets some time to push and farm, which I think is, is part of what the NC accounts on with this Brood pick, because they did pick it after the Darkseer pick. And this is something which is very, very MVP as well. I mean, they will take whatever objectives they can so that they can invade the enemy jungle. And at this point, they already know that this, um, you know, the ancient stacks are cleared and it's piling up again. At some point, they'll probably look to contest it. Itemization oh, for MP. For he may console. They're going for yeah, it. Uh, and I, I think he's got it from there. He's gonna yeah. run away. If the orc is finished on breed, that's an easy kill, but. They didn't have yet the Orchid, they've got, uh, he's got one Oblivion Staff and the recipe needs to farm another Oblivion Staff still. Which, this will actually force MP to go into either a BKB or a Manta Star. Just to get rid of that Orchid Silence. Here we go, the Dwell Breath coming out and Invoker will get himself another tower kill. Shard's just trying to scout things out. But AO's in the neighborhood. Ubu and Pebby looks like they want to go for this and they're committing for Tihi. An Impale coming here, stopping Spam in Strike and the Macro Pyre. Magic Missile lands into the TE. Ayo being caught by the close of a Kyo. Here comes the Sunstrike, it's gonna land. Not really, just kidding. And the Warrior's Punch is gonna. Oh, doesn't mean really kill anybody. MP going on TE, using all his remnants, and everyone's really, really, very low. They need one more stun. Kyo taking a lot of damage from the Spider. He's gonna get swapped out by Lord Dubu, and Kyo will just back off. Sam looking for more blood. 4 F. He lays on the web, and vacuumed back in. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And, uh... top tower. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good trade for TNC overall because their Sven killed top tower. They got two kills with, I think, both track and only the Jakira dies. Still going here. Oh. Ember Spirit getting himself to MH. A nice double impale. It's a Ravage. Don't strike. No, he jukes it just in the nick of time. Looking to deny himself to Roshan. He really wants to. He needs to click. No, Invoker's going to get himself another kill. So QO. I'm surprised the, 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 the Sam H just brood went back in there. I feel like he, he gave them the freebie. Um, not sure why he did that. So, he did buy some time for the Sven who got sort of half the HP on the tier 2 as well, but still a little bit of surprising. And 4F is closer to Greaves. I believe he just bought it, yeah. yeah. That's his Greaves completed. So that's plenty of sustainability for MVP so that they can take earlier objectives. And you can tell that they really don't want to let the Sven keep on stacking. Yeah, I think that uh, MEP are probably slightly ahead as the game stands because TNC would want to be more ahead. The game's kind of even, 
on most metrics, but uh, TNC would want to be put at a tower advantage. They'd want Sven to be quite far ahead instead of just like slightly ahead of, of the two carries mm -hmm. in their team. This so even though the game, towers. oh sorry, you were saying? Sorry, yeah, even though the game looks kind of even, I I think where each team want relative to where each team wants the game to be, it's it's much better place for MVP than TNC. <coughs> yeah, and I just want to point out in the network chart, you can tell it's really very even. Like you said, MVP they just took a slight lead, a thousand gold advantage, but only because of all these objectives that they are taking. And TNC, I feel that once the Sven gets a blink, it's gonna look very very scary for them. Yeah, and what's new, the, the Bounty Hunter only recently got level 6, the Jakira just got a Veil, Lion only just got his level 6, so TNC could win a big fight here with a whole bunch of track kills, and that would be enormous. Now they smoked up, they're going for the side flank. They gotta kill the Dark, the Dark has got Freeze. Like... Are they going on in Invoker, then in the back, game on 2 into the wall, Rib taking a bit of damage, and the Ice Wall catches up the 2, doesn't have to match fire, but there we go, the Sharing Chase catches up the Rib, and MP gonna get himself, no Invoker, just playing, and now there's Snowball for all the way to TE, right behind the enemy T2, and it's a nice double impale, but there we go, MP, he's diving deep for this one, looking for the double chase into AO and Vintage G, I'm sure he can land all the way behind his teammates, but the finger is gonna finish off the Febby right at the back line, and 4 does just back off, doesn't have Grease, for it's on cold up in 20 more seconds, and Dubu is gonna TP out, QO also happy to run back, as they do get the T2, but they're diving quite far, but looking for the Ice Pop, catches Febby just at a 4 F, just at the very tip, Fire and the Shuriken Toss will kill him off and MP really very low, looks like they may keep on chasing for this They just need one more Shuriken Toss, this MP needs to start bottling himself up right now No one is steering chain, but Ayo is dead Oh, the same guard, just saving him just barely for now, MP will have to run He will have to TP out, do we have another Shuriken Toss, such drag Ice Pop doesn't really connect and Ayo falls very very low So, was that a win for TNC or for MVP? Yeah, it's, it's probably overall a win for TNC, but only a very small one, and that's because the way that they start the fight, I feel like, has problems. Um, I don't think that... Uh, I, I think they had to start by going on the dark side. They let the dark side get off his greaves and his vacuum and his wall, and that's the key here for them to control. And this is... If we talk about MVP le learning a lot by playing TNC about drafting and their draft, I think what TNC can stand to learn a lot from MVP is about team fighting, and it's something that MVP has done better than almost any team in the world at the moment, to recognizing which heroes to target with which spells and which fights. Oh, Febby, Dubu, and Kyo looks like they're gonna find Raven, his gosh tank is just about to expire. Yeah, the sunshine is coming in and it's doing it, but he still has a lot of HP. Febby is very, very unhealthy. And Kyo as well, look at that cleave damage, Raven. Gonna just click down Kyo, needs one more, actually no, cancels the attack animation as Rana gives the MP having a battle of AO, good mother does kill the dark here at the side, and MP is really very, very low, and the Shuriken Toss still gonna follow him to the side, and he is tracked up. TNC is somehow winning that fight, which looks like a disaster as he was separated from the team. But no, that will be a huge victory and they will walk away with the spoils of war. TNC hitting their timings, like really it's going well for them. And in this one, they did put a special emphasis on dealing with the Darkseer. And honestly, right now, the Brood could just orc it up the Ember Spirits. And if they deal with the Darkseer between the, the Sven, the Jakira and the Lamb, TNC are probably going to be winning fights right now. I, I don't think the Invoker can do enough to control the fight on his own. And the Ember can do nothing while orcated. So, it's it's really about how well the TNC deal with the Darks here. I, I think that the next 5-10 minutes of the game, every single fight is going to be about Forev. We watch Forev, we see like, does he have a good fight, does he have a big impact, or did TNC play him out of the fight? And the, that's the only important question, I think, for, for this stage of the game. Yeah, I think that was a bad mistake as well, being drawn all the way into the fight, right Radiant all the way in the low ground over there, attack. before the secret shop, because we saw, without Forev, Without that sustain, the Guardian Griefs, his team just melts at the side. Especially to this Sven, who was actually fighting three heroes by himself, but somehow managed to come out on top of that. And MP is still 600 gold away from his Battle Fury, so maybe when he completes his items, you know, then things will look a bit better for them. I think they could kill MP if they wait for. Oh, he jumps out just on time because he's. Yeah, because he's still finishing the Battle Fury, and only after that could he go for a Manta Star or BKB. The Orchid's gonna represent a very serious threat to him for quite some time. And I was talking about before in the fights, but also in terms of pickoffs, he needs to be very careful about exactly how long he farms for, how long he pushes for. TNC, they have to finger up. I think they want to smoke because right now they're waiting for Jakira to push out this lane. Vintage and Raven is waiting very patiently, but this ward over here should scout them out. So this is a very, very good ward from MVP. Oh, just expired! Oh, this is perfect timing for TNC. They should be worried. MP should be very, very worried right now. Bottom lane, MP is the prize. Oh, there's gonna be smoke from TNC, and I, th I think they considered going for the rush. But... Oh no, no, no! They, they got an investor, and this is going to be MP. 
but he remnants back just in the nick of time. MP's been really good at that this game. I mean, here it's just because he finished the battle for you around to go back, but it's this is like the second or third time in a row that a rotation to kill him has failed. And this is MVP and MP in particular judging very well, you know, based on what they can and can't see of TNC, whether it's safe to be out on the map alone. And you see here, MVP actually group up as five, expecting a smoke and they're gonna be ready for it. Here he goes, and it's a beautiful ice pop and Macropy landing on three. The figure not at the kill two, but it's a three man back. And of course, the battle for the creep not gonna do as much for him. Laying down the wall, it's gonna go into everybody who's walking through it as for So tanky, but not tanky enough. Jakir's gonna get the kill, and the tornado's not known, just a bit too short. And they will keep on going. Yes. I think they want MVP like completely expected that smoke. And they grouped up, and unfortunately, they got caught. Just like multiple hero storm hammer, multiple hero ice path, and. Jakiro is really one of these annoying heroes to take fights against because you can't decide what kind of priority he is, you know, like is Jakiro a hero that you need to focus on first? Um, he's got the drum, he's got the veil, he's gonna spam out a lot of annoying spells on you, but you know, he's he's quite tanky and his damage isn't burst, he just does a lot of things over time and I think the Jakiro's value in the team fight actually really shows there when even though his ice pot's only level one, it's for two heroes for a second and Never mind his max start spells plus his veil, the impact that they're having in the fights, and it, it's really it's, it's really telling to me that MVP grouped up very deliberately, expecting to be smoked into. And I mean, they're complaining about ping now. Maybe that's the maybe they they feel like they couldn't react as quickly as they would have liked to. If if the ping was a bit better, then they would have been able to have faster reactions because they they certainly were expecting TNC to run into them. Indeed, and I mean, like you mentioned, it's only a level 1 ice path. He actually caught 4 heroes in that, 3 to 4 heroes, that was really huge. And that was enough to get a perfect stun for this event to land onto 2 heroes. And there you can see, 3 for old trade, and this gold graph, which was going in favor of MVP, just drops all the way straight back down in favor of TNC. And since we have a pause, let's take a look at item progression. I mean, Ayo, he's not as squishy as you would think of as a bounty. He has his... Cane boots, he has mech, he has his urn and a magic wand. He's actually pretty rich for someone who hasn't really found. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's track kills, right? It's the tracks that they've been getting off in these fights. Not too long ago, he only had an urn. Now he has a mech, now he's got another thousand gold. And this is why I think MVP decide now's the time to pause. We want to deal with the ping issues if we have them because MVP a team that historically lose a few fights, they don't really mind. They'll go win the next fights. When you're playing against a bounty hunter, it's so much more snowboardy. It's if you're gonna lose a few fights against a bounty hunter, oftentimes the game just ends. It's like you don't get more opportunities, you just get those two fights. So I can't actually over emphasize how important the next ten minutes of the game are for MVP. And if, if TNC kept having the sort of kind of snowboardy fights they've had for the last few minutes, MVP MVP could just be out of the game very quickly. Well, alternatively, if MVP turn it around and win one or two fights themselves, they could really make that gap. They could get Ember Spirit to his next item, they could get Darkseid to his next item, Invoker to his next item, and all of a sudden, they've, they're they the ones who've got the power to, to deal with TNC. <coughs> and, okay, so for now, I mean, do you think there's any time soon you'll see? I mean, you talked about the next 10 minutes. Will we see like maybe a rush attempt? Will Roshan be the next big thing which will decide whether we see like more objectives taken? Well, I mean, it's, it's complicated in this game because uh, I don't think MVP can take rush very easily. I think it's very risky for them to do it positionally. But TNC, if they go for rush, it's, it's maybe one of the better parts of the map for MVP to win a big fight with the Ember <laughs> Spirit, Darkseer, Tusk, uh, Invoker combo. So. I would expect that neither team would go for rush unless they they've like killed key enemy heroes and then feel like uh, it's just one to right. So mid T1, the fortification will be forced out. Raven in a bad position and MP. Oh, he's remnant back in. He wants to go. He gets the chase, but now he's gonna go back out. Sebi, they go straight for Raven. They want to kill him, who hasn't been able to cast a single spell, and that stun gets off just in the nick of time. Raven um, getting the kill here, and he's silenced up. Oh, look at the bottom. He's coming back again, and there we go. He's gonna chase after the spider. The Inti Rinti spider gets squashed like a bug, and MP really get away in the nick of time. Tihi gonna get himself a kill as the bounty finds himself another and the ice path Tihi has to run. Febby still has to shot. The snowball's gonna catch him just right there and the sigil's not gonna really save him. Oh wait, the magic wand just in the nick of time but the shards is gonna kill him. So three for two trade and you can see here Winter G he used a finger but I didn't really see on who. Yeah I don't know. It's a, look it's a, it's a small win for um for MVP, MVP but only a small one because there's 
TNC still had trap kills, like two for three. I think that the pause maybe hurts TNC a bit there because they looked a bit, they didn't have their bearings with the game and pause. Like they just won a very good team fight and usually when a team has just won a very good team fight and an enemy team is respawning, the, the respawning team is an advantage because you know, you all got 12 and then all your spells ready. And I think TNC were maybe a little bit too blase about that engagement. Still ends up being only slightly advantageous for MVP. But it needs to be careful they have to maintain the composure there. The lion has nearly got a blink and that bounty hunter just bought an Netherlands. This is not a pickup I've ever seen, but I immediately think that it's it's a good one. It's actually I mean <laughs> longer range track and Shuriken especially, which got nerfed, right? When they added that bouncing ability to Shuriken, they made it short range, but it's gonna be really nice and we talked about the rush before MVP are and like are trying their luck at this rush. Gonna card it. I like it for sure you can toss damage because you gotta remember Etherlands also boosts a bit of magic damage. Yeah, eight percent amp. So even if it's not that much, it's still always significant. That bounce this is, is really, really really annoying. This I really want to go. Expecting a fight. Yeah, they wanna go. Pilots are coming in, the ice wall comes down, and you can see he's back straight up to the cliff. He's not coming down anytime soon. He has to CP out an MVP if they have to fight now is the time. Simage watching from the cliff and so is his man. Actually we can keep it out forever. So we have MP so as well and Winter G they will keep the darks here right there. And now MVP suddenly they are on the charge. They go, they will find Sam Page, Snowball Connect, and of course there we go, the Warriors punch up in the air, MP silenced up, they wanna go Q, immediately swapped out by Lord Dubu and Winter G. Hey, yo, they wanna find themselves another track here, maybe fine. We'll get the bench at the end. So Raven now on the charge. MP chains again, throwing him in this spot, and of course he's taking a lot of damage from the fort. Red's Q. Maybe he can find Winter G. He's not just in the nick of time, and Febby is a bit too slow. So that was a, I would say a win for TNC. They stalled the Roche. They beat all the spells out. What? Well, yeah, the rush is still there. And actually, if they realized how low he was, they could have maybe finished themselves. Did Did Raven actually TP off the cliff there? How did he get off the cliff? TP it out. No choice. Okay, so. So it took a while to get it. I was just wondering because that was. I feel like that was already cleverly banned bit by MVP. Oh, if they of hey, Very you. close. The Forge Spirit. Winter G trying to impale. Doesn't really get it. And that's a dominating streak going the way of Kyo. And they push in for Winter G MP. And definitely blast Kyo with a double kill, mega kill streak. And they will go ahead to complete this Roshan. So TNC just not grasping full use of that opportunity presented to them. It's so clever by MVP. The previous one, you know, lost the fight and this one. They, they're so aware that TNC don't want to give up the rush. But they also know that the Invoker can kind of solo the rush. They put him in there alone and they just baits. And like I said before, TNC going for rush when MVP is alive is dangerous because of the AoE combo. And we, we saw that happening there. I mean, sure there was some gimmicky stuff with, with vacuuming into the cliff. But whether or not you vacuum to the cliff, I, I just think that MVP are well positioned to take that fight at the rush pits. And they, they deliberately set those fights up. And I, I think it's very clever thinking of them, even though the first one didn't go as well as they thought it would. Raven oh, did we get the silence off an MP? He, he has to run, he's running very very quickly actually. Thinking about going back in. AO is in the neighborhood, so maybe they can try again for MP. I just realized, you know, we talked about maybe like a Manta style after the Battle Fury, but we're not seeing that. We're seeing that he's going straight for more damage, and it seems like he has, you know, plenty of faith in his team. He's gone for the Quick Stillers, he's already picked it up. So... Yes. Confidence in positioning, in teamwork, that... I'm not gonna get caught by by Orca and then just get burst down and I, I kind of like that. I like that commitment to your plan. Like with Ember Spirit, the timing you're waiting for really is the Daedalus. Usually Battle Fury Daedalus and then suddenly you're like this huge force to be reckoned with. And when, when Ember Spirits have to go back for the Mantle to be KB in between, they, they offset that timing and give a new opening. Also the Mantle style, not so good against the Sven's Cleave obviously. Um, but I like this and we'll have to, we'll see. Maybe there'll be a fight where he gets totally played out of the fight by the Orchid and it will look like a bad decision in reverse. Call it in immediately. And the media combo, but he's going to use himself up so he's not going to take any damage from that. He's still kind of stuck with the map and the armor, the wall cry coming up from Raven. Shuriken starts just bouncing around a bit and you can see the MP. There's a BKB on Raven. He's got yeah, a BKB. Yeah, he's, he's going straight for QO. Can he get this down? No, the defense is so on Dubu just in the nick of time. But he's still going to lose the Aegis anyway and MP. Taking quite a fair bit of damage, gonna just remnant away and they're going straight for QO. Boost tracks down, they go to walk, is it gonna help you except provide some more movement speed? And that's a lovely vacuum for forever. You can see the Warriors Punch catching Sam H. QO. Needs to do a bit more with the Shuriken Toss and the Stark Bounty Hunter's gonna get the kill. And here we're gonna impair for Winter G. They're going straight up Febby and MP. Stark taking plenty of clean from Raven. And it's a 4 for nil trade. And we could take into account the ages, it's a, it's a 5 for O trade. Yeah, the introduction of Sven's BKB, just phenomenal there. I think that as soon as MVP realized, hey, Sven is BKB, they they, they they realized that this is not a fight that we can very easily win. And they they tried briefly to turn it around with the Dark Souls combo, but 
I think it was pretty apparent that it wasn't enough, and this is why I think it, partially at least why Ember Spirit goes straight for the damage, because they want to be in a position where when they hit the three hero vacuum, they're always getting a lot of value out of that. They're always going to kill a lot of people, and right now that's not happening. In some ways, the big AOE combo is actually set up for TNC because Sven then turns around and says, "Hey, well, you're also banished," and just peeves through them. So BKB catching them off guard. Um, oh, there's actually a gem on the floor. Lion's going to pick it up, and. Alright, so TNC would just go back to resetting the clock as they look to stack more ancients and get this vent bigger. So and I, I really love this Etherland's bounty answer. I think it's like really cool actually. 3.3k gold now. What does he buy? I think he completes the Greaves. Um, he yeah, he could go for Greaves. Greaves could be pretty good for his team. Obviously, because he has Tranquils, there's like that slight inefficiency, but um. I don't know, I could see him getting some more damage. I've seen Bounty Hunters go Dagon at this point in time, or Physical Damage, or BKB, or go straight for Hex, or Necrobook. There's actually, Bounty Hunters is such an interesting hero in that, like, there aren't a lot of items that it has to get. Yeah, so he gets the four stuff. You know, it's, it's like a decision of, like, which utility item is going to be most useful to the team right now. He decides the four stuff. I don't think they had any before that, am I right? Yeah, first, I don't think first, so. first four stuff of the game for your team is always extremely valuable. Not to mention great for the hiding heroes around, especially against heroes like this event. You just need to bait out the fights. Once it's got strength, wears off, you stand a better chance of fighting. So you can't really take them head on. Just to bait them into fights which you really want. So... And there's a interaction, right? There's a... Even though it doesn't... Force off doesn't go further with the lens, but it lets you force people from further. So if you're using it defensively to save your teammates, oh, they're gonna you smoke can do up. that from, from a safer distance. TNC, performance <coughs> with the Bird Mother. She has a Blink Dagger, so... I gotta admit, this is not your usual item. Except when you know when you're usually alone in a lane. You want a rat? Yeah, but this, but this is because they they, they, they build their being Oh, they're the going problem. on AO. Mech pops up, and Raven's gonna find Dugu Tornado, throwing everyone up in the air. And they will go straight for Kiro, realizing, hey, Dugu's not really the prime target, but we kill him first, and then they'll go straight for Kiro. Finger to finish him off, and to spend one more right click, easy. One big spank from that huge cleave. Because uh, because the Ember Spirit hasn't gone for Ember Mantle BKB, I think that's why the breed goes for Blink, saying, well, if you're not going to respect my Orchid, I'm going to make sure that I that I Orchid you every single fight. I mean, in this fight, the, the Ember's not best, they Orchid the Invoke, and Invoke uses defensive yules, and they're like, well, hello, we've got Shakira, and this is one of the strengths of the Shakira hero, that it really punishes the defensive yules. And this is a T2, if anything, this potentially could lead to a high ground push, or at least baiting out the buyback. There's so no there's a zoning on wall. He, he, does he have it? No, he doesn't, he doesn't have, have it. it. Yeah, but I think that's what they have in mind. That's usually the plan. And that's a very nice ward over here. It's gonna scout TP's out, and TNT can't really do anything about it. We just playing with the Jakira. Yeah, and the way this game is playing out, you see more and more why Ember Spirit feels like he has to go straight for Daedalus, right? Because he he needs to have those uh, that big damage because it, it feels like the pressure is absolutely on MVP. There was a stage early on where it felt like. The game was even and they were managing TNC well, but all it took is a couple of fights and some track kills and TNC have got a big gap. And in terms of the draft, I, I feel like TNC have quite a big advantage anywhere outside of the Darkseid's influence. Mm -hmm. And now MP, <laughs> he actually has the money to buy the full data list right now. That's of course he's saving for buyback. Oh actually wait, no, he's turned around, he's bought an ultimate orb. This could be a Lincoln Spear or even, maybe even a Scotty, just so that he can kite around to spin more. Yeah, it could even just be the, the Mantis style, right? The standard build we expected. I mean, once you have the Chrysalis, I gotta say, the other items, the Scardy, the Lincolns, the BKB, the Mantis star, those items actually do add up to more DPS once you have the Chrysalis. It's just the build where you go Battle Fury straight into um, something else, then the damage is underwhelming. It looks like he's gonna actually go for a Scardy if he pull all the Venom on his deck. Oh, they go straight for Dubu, but blocked off by the shards, what a save! And Dubu is just gonna stun Raven, stun and the blink. Great teamwork again, beautiful teamwork as you can see here from MVP. Ayo is just gonna provide vision of Febby, say hi to him, provide a couple of hits, and that's the god strength faded out. And wait for Snowball to the creeps, just sticking around, saying hi. So this is space um, created at MVP, push us out the top, Doxia in the bottom lane. Doxia has a blink now, which... I think it's really big, it's a really big pickup for top lane, TD is just going straight on the cure as he TP's in, but there's gonna be an Ember Spirit coming in as well, so TD will back off, but hey, what no. I want to say is, oh, I, I, I think that the Docs here is, is, has been and is still the, the centerpiece for MVP in winning fights, and when he gets a new item, like for example Blink, that's something that TNC really have to respect. 
and he's just gonna ram them around the map, split pushing. So this BOT is really paying off, and he's very he's all the same. I mean, I talked about how he was so close to a Daedalus. He's really close to a Scotty right now. He needs just another 300 more gold. This Fen yeah, is to fall off. It makes them very tanky, and it's really nice to be able to kite people in fights. If you use Slides of Fist and a Scotty, it like slows everyone. But at the same time, with this build, with the Battle Free Fist Fist and Scotty, if, if TNC get the jump on him with the, the Brood and the, the Sven, even the Lion blinking on him, the Ember Spirit is going to die. And I think, again, as you said earlier, the expectation from MP is just that his teammates, either Venge is going to save him, Tusk is going to save him, or Dox is going to be able to jump in and turn things around. So I guess he just have, you know, just putting a lot of faith into MP Renner to carry his team. And for FP, he just has to pull his off one amazing vacuum. This is how intense this game is right now. 16 to 28 to 32 minutes in. The net worth chart in favor of TNC. Actually, they're gonna find Dubu, Fabi. Oh wait, no, they're gonna find Ayo Ned and just a bait. And the sentry, the casual sentry for F. Vacuum for two, and of course the wall to follow. So the Shuriken is just bouncing around his work, but it gets fingered before he gets Ayo. And somehow, and Google coming into Sunstrike, the sun going on straight on FP. Remember now, silence, and he's and just that... gonna die. Doesn't even get to pop the one charge, and they will smoke to try and catch somebody. Gonna go straight on Dubu. He would, yep, it's gonna be a three for one train. That's literally what I was just saying. Sven, Breedmother, and Lion blink onto Ambersbird, and if Ambersbird is, is isolated, and the reason that happens actually is because MVP started that fight but at a different part, and like a different part of the forest, and that means that Ambersbird gets isolated by the three blinkers from TNC, and they they make easy work of that Ambersbird, and even if he had his completed Eye of Scardy there, I think that they still kill him. While TNC decide now to time to try and catch five on Rush, but it's immediately being pinged out by MVP, and this could be very dangerous, there's no mana on Lion at all. Yeah, this is really, really, really risky. I mean, your Dark is coming out in 10, but you don't have the Ember Spirit, so you don't have to follow up damage. Unless you get a good vacuum into a media combo. So, yep, TNC, they figured, hey, it's too risky. Let's just back out, reset for now. Lion's going actually, to suck some mana out of creeps. That's uh, actually, maybe gonna not come not back as good as me. Back in. <coughs> the TP. Oh, wait, they stole the Forge Spirit. Okay, that's pretty smart. Tihi now running around 451 movement being a very fast dragon. Dark side doesn't have wall just yet. So there's still potential for combo. Comes the tornado combo. Tihi. Oh, they do get the combo up with QO. Swapped out immediately by Dubu, who's gonna pay for his life. And QO getting spanked down by Raven in this huge stick. One more right click. Actually, no, blinks out. And Sammy is going here on MP. He's gonna back off and Febby doesn't really get the Warriors punch off and the BKB and Sandman really starting to prove itself very useful. MP, oh they found him! I think he's just dead. You don't run away from this, not like this. Oh no, he the Deputy Blast is mean, brilliant, but it wasn't there. He doesn't have tools for survival. That's the the thing with the sword, I mean sure he's on oh, gonna keep on going. Forev! Forev, you're in the wrong neighborhood. And QO once again trying to save his team. There's no buybacks on anybody, and the vacuum doesn't really connect into anybody. And Winter G sucking out the mana for Forever Sunstrike, not gonna land. Actually, it will, and the Iron is dead. Gem is on the floor, and Rhythm is gonna kill the Darks here. So, this is gonna be a 4 for 1 trade, favoring TNC. And they will just run straight back to the Roche Pit before they try for maybe a T2 or maybe a T3. And it's it's actually kind of hilarious to me. TNC keep winning fights, but somehow in the middle of a fight, the TNC wins. Kuro is always killing at least one person with a sun's kick. <laughs> like, just like, I don't know. Kuro is actually TP'd into the back line. He's trying to set the ball on his Oh, he's gonna get silenced up. Tracked up. Fuel stuff in the air. Does he blink out from this? Tracked out. I don't think he runs from this. Yep. Getting blast, trying to slow things down. Can't use his blink. Spiders! The spider's cancelling his blink and he's gonna try and blink. No way, Sam Hadrian blinks in front of him. Spider Venom doing its work. Kyo, Tornado again. He's buying so much time. This Octary Core doing so much work. And Raven, Kyo's up in the air. Blink out maybe. Yes, he will. And the chase for Kyo lays down the ice one. He actually lives. That's, this is one of the best players I've ever seen in Dota. That's, I mean, Kyo was going in there fully knowing that he might die. He's trying to stop the enemy team from rushing. They did stop rushing. They all chased him around. Sven eventually came as well, because Sven didn't feel safe in the rush put on his own. And they don't even kill Kyo. And I, I honestly think that Kyo went into that play thinking, you know what, I might die, but I'm going to stop them from rushing. And he, he doesn't, he even doesn't die. Back. He, he, he doesn't die. That's. I mean, please, someone make that into a clip, because that is... 
some phenomenal ball we play from here and very very good. Very good. Going straight for this as they bring Rinsen G into the clip, but that's not the one you want in the clip. Dubu's gonna swap out MP. Which oh, okay, he's gonna get tracked out and silent up and lying gonna finger down the Ember Spade immediately. He has right now five heroes for him. I'm not sure how good MP's invoker is, but I, mean, I only saw some magic, but I don't think this is gonna be enough. Febby's gonna go get himself killed. Gonna you be know what? Four for, oh. You know what happened? The, as the fight started, Kira didn't have TP. He had 10 seconds left on his TP, and it's the same kind of thing. So there's a fight at the rush, but the current Voku can't get there. Obviously, TSC and TNT have a very big advantage. They didn't. The MVP didn't want to let the rush go, but they didn't really have a way to contest it without the Voku. And Kira forced to just split push now, and he's going to try and put as much pressure as he can. But it's a bit of an oversight from MVP that then Voku couldn't TP in, and they weren't able to avoid that full pretty good fight. The ice staff are going to find QO. Can they kill him this time? No, uh, there's no backup, no follow-up at all. But still, it's it's finally, I mean, this is the... Wait, this is the first, this is the second rush, right, of the game. There was one rush before this, but... I feel like they've been, the teams have been fighting over who gets this rush for like the last 15 minutes. And... Finally a rush is killed, it is TNC that get it, the Broodmother has the ages. Sven picked up an Assault Curas in between. And TNC are looking extremely good in this matchup. They... I... I honestly, I don't know. I, I feel like it's time for Emberspur to go back to the damage. Finish the data list, maybe even buy a Rapier. Because, barring Emberspur getting big items, they're gonna keep relying on Cure, just making phenomenal plays, and... I think there's a limit to that. I think... I don't know, maybe once he gets to level 25 and he's got that maxed out Deafening Blast, that could help a lot in these fights. Maybe, but I, I'm not sure about the Rapier thing for now, because the thing is... TNC, they've been playing this excellent. They know who to focus on. They've been just taking care of MP, making sure that he hasn't had that. He hasn't been able to dish out the impact of full damage, which he should be with forever. And besides taking out one, they don't want to take out the Ember's Brave Darks here to fight this one. So, I don't know, man. Kuro, you're a magician, but you really conjure up that much magic to beat this yeah, and just yeah. carry his team. Or they, they try to capture, they don't fight. But that's why I'm saying that Emerson needs to stop thinking that way. I mean, I'm not so. It's a different question where he gets the farm, but he needs those big all in plays, those big items for damage, because the game is slipping away from MVP very, very quickly. And I'm still pretty confident that he needs a defensive item, at least like a BKB or something. Because if not, the silence is really hurting him. And right now, middle lane, they're going straight for this push. You know, oh, wait, he's just going straight for the stun. It's eight, three hits and fingered down. Oh, there we go, Kyo, <laughs> the level 22 deafening glass. And the... Uh, oh, back here into the wall, it's huge! Four, oh, man! Bepi, is that a follow up Kyo? Or Staff Guard trying to save him, but Kyo, does he have buyback? He'd be forced to buyback here, I think, yes, he will. You know, MP pushing in the... Pushing the top T1, and there's still no lane of Rex with TNC just yet. He will have the TP, I can join his team to fight. Kyo, making all these plays, slowing down, he's just delaying them so much. And Raven, now the steering chain's gonna save him, and of course, beautiful defensive snowball catching him and going straight for Winter G. And there comes MP! is gonna kill Raven, and they're gonna go chase down AO. The Aegis is gonna get pumped on the Brood Mother, as MP's gonna try and rack it down Sam H. It's the gem on the point, anybody? There we go! MP getting some a thousand gold from killing off Sam H, and they will go for a bit more. And they will kill the bounty as well, so four, actually make that a five for zero trade, and they get the top lane on Rax as well, so MP um. is somehow... Coming out on top. And, and buff racks maybe too. At this rate, are there buybacks on TNC? Are people gonna come respond to Cure? I'm not going to start now. Yeah, they have to. They, they try not to buy back a core, they buy back a bounty and so I don't know if that's enough actually to hold Cure back. I think he's gonna insist that they buy back a core. Need one more right click. Oh, they do get the tower anyways. Denied by Jakiro. This is, I mean, other than Cure just playing exceptionally well. It's, it's TNC not respecting the power of buyback, that's what it is. Like, the way TNC committed in that mid push, you could tell very clearly that they sort of thought, we killed Invoker, we won the game, let's go, and he buys back and it's it's disastrous for them. Oh, they find AO. Gonna really get it, but uh, MP. Chains off. And Grimmother and Sven, they are forced to buy back MVP. You need to just retreat right now. This is not the fight, this is not the fight. They use up the Duke King stun, but MP. Oh, this is a disaster. Swapped out immediately by Dubu Defensive Stun. And where's the finger? Oh, saved by the snowball. But somehow Dubu still dies. Grimmother, here comes the Deafening Blast. They're gonna find MP who is running for his dear life. He needs to get out and the chain. He needs the stun. He will fall anyways. He still has buyback, but three down. And the top lane is being pushed in by Forev. And the gem is This on is the just floor. so incredible. This is just, I mean. Until a few minutes ago, TNC had a 20,000 gold lead, uh, 20,000 experience lead, 
And they're the ones that have been raxed. They've been raxed top, both raxes are dead, but they've lost their tower. They've even finished their axe in the mid lane, and that's exceptional play from MVP. At the same time, TNT are, are like still, I, I want to say, ahead in this game, because the Invoker doesn't have buyback for, what, another five minutes? If he dies, the game is almost over, just like that. TNT might be able to... I don't know, I was going to say they could try and force the Embers buyback now too, but it looks like they, they're nervous to actually get there that quickly. And uh, this is really some very, very intense duel between these two teams right here. So, I mean, we still haven't really agreed on what item the Embers should go for you. I believe you're all about the YOLO Divine Rape here, right? Well, he, he finished the Daedalus. That was my first part of his plan. But yes, I think that next... I, I don't know. Things have changed since then. That's the thing. They've done quite well. But I, I do still think, yeah, I think they maybe need him. Oh, they're going to get a different Kyo. He's going to get shot up by Dugu immediately. And Dugu's going to get whacked up by Kyo. He's perfectly fine with it for now. Just kidding. And the Snowball not really going to save anybody. And wait, does he get a save on Kyo? Kyo is still alive. And the Yul's keeping him there. He needs to blink out. Kyo is dead with no buyback. And oh, this is a disaster. You see everyone here, no buyback. An MVP except the Ember Spirit, he has 3 seconds left, so he didn't want to use the buyback, but this will be a lane of Rax. Anything should be... Maybe go straight for the throne, they can consider this. Yeah, they can. Oh, they're going to an MP! And silent stop and 4 stop for it, he's just dead. He's got a buyback, right? Yeah, he has but, a buyback. But is he enough? That's the question. I, I don't think he is enough. Maybe he cooks on every single slide. Maybe. For your life, MP, what are you doing, MP? And the vacuum back sandwich into the fountain. It's not quick enough. MP holding on to your dear life as Raven hitting onto the T4s. This is just, just looking so intense right now. And he's gonna Revenant for going for T here and uh, Vintage with a beautiful intel catching too. But somehow, Raven, he doesn't care. He's just going straight for the throne. Okay. Line, get a pass, get a bit of lag, but still, this. Oh, oh my god, what, what's is... gonna happen here? I don't know, this is nail-biting stuff, because actually, Ember Spirit's got a lot of work done, because the Sven has, has the Sven and the line have just been standing attacking the throne, and the towers the whole time. So the Ember Spirit's had a lot more space, and... Okay, <laughs> inside actually time, let's all go to the Ember Spirit. Oh, MP needs to down here, but Febby... Oh, but going for the snowball, MP inside of this, not really gonna do that much, Sven does kill off the bench, MP is getting right click down, he needs to run it back into the fountain, he will, and now, now the Vibe comes up for him, Raven, he's going straight for the throne. Does he have a of God Strike? No, he does not! And 4F is gonna play Raven right here. They need to do something. They need to kill Raven right now. They can't do it, but MP immediately hangs up. Immediately locked down. Gonna get 4 staff for an talent stuff. Mage, boy, get an MP. Does he get the side of this? Oh, yes, he does. He needs to rev it back in. He's still alive. QO. They need MP. They need MP back right now. And there's oh, all so Raven fresh. finally going to fall down here. And Sam Mage right back to the throne. Gonna... Does he have the damage? I don't think he does. The Maybe lion's trying it. to throw him. The lion's trying to throw him. Fine, hit the throne! No! He's still trying to, he's trying to end it 200 HP, he just does not have the damage for that no damage. Here comes Tihi! They did a fortification, Tihi. This is so close. Oh, did they kill him right here, Sunstrike? 170 HP and no buyback on anyone except the Lion. They have to go all in right here. MVP, they're going straight they're gonna to the win. throne. They're gonna win. MVP's gonna win. <laughs> what? What just happened, Scats? MVP are about to win this game. Lion cannot do this alone. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way in hell he does this alone. Ah, oh, he's dead. And I think TNT just lost. This is uh, <laughs> yeah. This is one of the most awesome Dota games I've ever seen. In my oh life. my this, god. There were some plays by both teams. There were the drafts were interesting. I mean, even now, as MVP killed the the TNT engine, there's like a 20k lead for TNT as their throne goes down. What an absolutely incredible. Oh, wow. so he... classic TNC vs MVP. MP says it, and that's that says it all. Like, what, what a matchup this is. Uh, <laughs> the the best of five that they played right before the Shanghai Major was just like this. It was really intense, really intense stuff. And I'm just so happy it's not.